Welcome back fellow chess fans to yet another update on how many moves exist in the game because I found my original total to be insufficient at best. But first, let me explain how I categorized all of the moves. There are normal moves without capture, check, or checkmate. Pawn promotions to each of the four pieces are included in this and the other five categories. Capture without check or checkmate. Normal move with check. A capture with check. And finally, the normal move with checkmate. And of course, a capture with checkmate. Unfortunately, there is a limitation to actually finding these moves in a standard PGN. For example, I showed white delivering checkmate with the rook on the H file, but it could have been done with the rook on the E file. If a PGN just included rook captures H7, then the ending is ambiguous because we would not know which rook was actually moved. To disambiguate the options, the file of the rook moved is added. In other words, the PGN would record rook E captures H7 or rook H captures H7, depending on which one was used. In some cases, it would specify the rank instead, and on rarer occasions, the origin square of the piece moved. To get consistent notation for every move, I used enhanced or long algebraic notation where the origin square is always specified. So the two moves would be written as rook E7 captures H7 or rook H2 captures H7. This notation also labels en passant moves with EP, allowing me to differentiate them from normal pawn captures. As such, I count these moves separately, and surprisingly, not a single viewer was upset with my decision. Using enhanced algebraic notation to classify starting and ending squares for pieces and counting en passant separately, I claim there are 22,418 moves for either color. This claim didn't last long because soon after the video went live, a viewer commented that I forgot about stalemate. After thinking too long about it, I decided to search for them because occasionally it's your best option. Take this position from an exhibition involving Garry Kasparov in 1986. He is winning against Neil MacDonald until he plays Bishop captures e4. Out of the top five engine lines, black is still facing checkmate except in one. By playing rook captures g3 check, the white king will capture and black will respond with queen e5 check. This is where the game ended because believe it or not, it is now Kasparov who only has one move or else he will lose this game. Your uncle and possibly tipsiest friend at the bar would find that white is forced to play queen captures e5, and the game ends in stalemate. While not ideal for a world champion who is winning just two moves previous, this move does have strategic value, in this case to avoid losing, so I feel it's worthy of distinction. You might agree that makes it fair to increase 22,418 with the 7,558 stalemate moves, but even this comes up short. There is another scenario where you can end the game on purpose to avoid losing, do you know what it is? Hopefully you got my tiny hint from the first sentence of the video because it's insufficient material. If you thought I was going to say threefold repetition or something else, convince me in the comments. So how little material is insufficient in the first place? Most obvious should be king vs king, but it can also occur if just one side has a knight, or a bishop. However, occasionally each side can have a bishop and it still isn't good enough. And that's it, because under no circumstances can checkmate be delivered or stumbled into accidentally with these combinations. But does that mean four pieces is the maximum number that can be on the board for a game to be drawn due to insufficient material? Think about it and I will reveal the answer at the end of the video. Despite this seemingly clear as day list of combinations, confusion still abounds. Take this end game between Friedel and Halkias in 2007. After black plays knight d6 check, white ran out of time so the result should be a clear victory for black, or so it seems. What we can definitely say right now is that white can checkmate black since it has a rook. The reverse isn't true as black's knight alone is not enough to checkmate white. However, the rook on the board changes things and it's conceivable that white finds itself getting checkmated. So both sides can put the other in checkmate, but only white can force it. According to the US Chess Federation, which is what chess.com uses, the game is a draw despite white running out of time because black cannot force checkmate. On the other hand, Fide is basically, So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! If you know your geography, this is bad news for Friedel, as this game took place in Germany, and so Black was declared the winner. If you're still confused, I don't blame you. I've included links in the description for how both chess platforms apply the rules, and I'm sure you can find even more in their respective forms. For my purposes, I'm only counting moves that, when played, immediately force a game to be declared a draw due to these four scenarios. With knights, bishops, and kings as the pieces that may be on the board when a game ends this way, it's pretty easy for me to find the moves because my previous work on counting them comes in handy. For all three pieces, they must capture an opposition piece, but of course not deliver checkmate. 
The requirements reduced the count significantly, leaving the knight with 672, the bishop with 1,120, and the king with 840 moves. That's 2,632 moves, but we cannot add them to the total yet, as we should first confirm whether all of those potential moves are possible in this context. Luckily, all 672 moves with the knight are possible, but we need to take a much closer look at the other two, starting with the bishop. For a bishop, it's all about the long diagonals, or if you want to be fancy, if it is fianchetto. A bishop cannot put a king in check by moving from one corner to the other, so it cannot possibly pull off a capture with check move. With four corners, that is four impossible moves. Elsewhere on the diagonal, it is still the corner moves that are problematic. A fianchetto bishop cannot move to either corner, capture a piece, and put the opposition king in check with the game ending immediately due to insufficient material. After doing these three squares, I can use the symmetry of the board to fill out the rest. These impossible moves reduces the bishop total further to 1092. When the king is in the corner, any of its three moves as a normal capture can do the trick, but none of them are possible with check. On the remaining edge squares, the king has five potential moves, but the same restriction remains. You might think I've got them all, but there are a few very subtle ones remaining. Do you know the squares? If the king is on any of these four squares, he has eight potential moves, and it's the ones on the long diagonal which do not allow for a capture with the discovered check. In all, the king move count must be reduced by 140. Adding these moves to my previous claim allows me to update the total of possible chess moves to 32,440. We have, however, not quite accounted for every possible move because we are forgetting about the pawn. I know, go ahead and prepare your comment, but just wait about hitting enter. When pawns reach the second or seventh rank, their next move is promotion, but of course for this calculation must be to knight or bishop. That makes two moves per square, or 16 for the entire rank. Since these moves are also possible with check, that is another 16 moves. Captures is a bit different since pawns do so diagonally, meaning once again there are two options from the A file. On B through G files, there are four until once again just two from the H file. That's 28 possible capture promotions, and conceivably all of these could also occur with check. This gives a grand total of 88 pawn moves that can end the game on the spot, increasing the total number of possible chess moves to 32,528. If you've already typed a scathing comment about my inclusion of the pawn moves, I'm not even mad. Please post it. I want to be entertained. But I'm going to go out on the longest and thinnest of limbs here as I think some of the promotions can be justified under the assumption our opponent will make the best move. Take this setup. Even if white promotes the pawn to a queen, to avoid losing black is forced to capture and the game ends in a draw anyway. So instead, end the game on your own terms and promote to a bishop. Now, the setup is a bit different. To avoid losing, white must capture, but like before, choosing a bishop doesn't change the outcome. You might think I started with check because I can't justify it without check, but you're wrong. Here's the situation. White cannot move the king, and the promotion square is protected by black's bishop. Choosing any piece but the bishop allows the game to continue at least one more move, and we don't want that. Now, the pawn has been moved to a7, and black has a queen on b8, but the white king is in the same predicament. White can again end the game immediately with a capture and promotion to a bishop. If you're thinking I started with the bishop because I can't justify it with the knight, you're wrong. We've seen this position before, no, the pawn won't survive becoming a rook or queen, but it can become a knight. If I move the pawn over and add a queen to b8, we find ourselves in familiar territory again, so why not promote to a knight? If we assume black will always respond with the best move, then the six scenarios I just played out demonstrate it didn't matter what white's move was, the game is a draw, and this is where I finally run out of limb. Here, promotion to a knight would end the game with check, but if we require black to have an optimal response to white, then here white should make the optimal move, which is to a rook. Similarly, this capture with promotion to a knight would also end the game with check, but again the best move is choosing a rook. Unlike the first six scenarios, there is no arrangement of pieces to end the game with insufficient material, where I can justify putting the opposition king in check via promotion to a knight with or without capture as the best available option. So should these moves count towards the total? I suppose you can make a good case for no. However, the rules of the game do not prevent blunders, making it possible to play them, and so I will count them. Until you tell me of another category I've missed, I currently claim the number of potential moves in the game of chess is now 32,528 for normal, stalemate, and insufficient material situations. I have searched the Lee Chess database through March 2025, all 6.5 billion games, and for some pieces in some situations, all moves have been played. 
In my next video, I will reveal who played the final moves and how many remain in the yet to be completed categories. But before I go, let me answer the question for the maximum number of pieces that can be on the board when the game is declared a draw due to insufficient material. The answer will be revealed with this 56 move masterpiece. I purposefully let out a condition about king plus bishop versus king plus bishop endings, which is they are insufficient as long as the bishops are of the same color. Therefore, this situation is independent of how many bishops are actually on the board. I'm curious how quickly such a game could be reached as I would be surprised if 56 is actually it, but in any event the game will come to an end with 20 pieces on the board, 2 kings, and 18 bishops. So while you try to beat my record of 56 moves, I will try to get my next video posted soon so those legends of Lee Chess can get their due for playing a piece's final move. Until then, thank you very much for watching.